Today, I'm going to give you an example of how holistic management works in practice. This decision-making process is applicable to everyone, no matter who you are or what you do, because almost every one of our decisions involves unique social, economic and environmental elements. But the example I'll use today is an agricultural one. In theory, most regenerative agricultural practices are good, and some may work very well in some situations. But that isn't the problem. No matter how good a farming practice is in theory, in reality, every single time it is carried out, it will impact completely unique and entirely unpredictable social, economic and environmental circumstances. So every time we copy and paste a practice without first testing and allowing for that unique complexity it will be carried out in, it will result in damaging, unavoidable and unintended consequences. So here's a real life example of what a perfectly good farming practice looks like in theory versus what happened when it was actually carried out in reality. So there's a farming practice being rolled out here in Zimbabwe where they teach people to clear a crop field, then plant three different types of seed in straight rows with X amount of seeds per row and X amount of seeds per hole, then dress it with fertilizer provided by the government and then mulch the whole field with grass. This is what happened in reality we went, when we went into rural villages to see how it was going. First of all, to clear the fields, many people had burnt the areas, which caused immediate environmental damage and social conflict, and many of the fires were left unsupervised and got off, out of control, which, which increased every, all of those problems. Then, because they had been told to plant in straight rows, people had cut down any trees that were in the way causing damage to the environment, and doing that led to conflict with some of the other villagers who understand the importance of ecological health. So that was an unpredictable social consequence. Some villagers had cut down even more trees so that they could lie big branches over the grass, which was being used to mulch the crop to prevent it getting blown away by the wind. So that was more environmental and social conflict. And there was also conflict between the villagers who wanted grass for thatching their houses and the people who wanted it as food for their livestock. So more social conflict. Now, none of these things happen because the practices we use themselves are bad. The original idea of the practice may work perfectly well in some situations, but no practice is ever being carried out in the same circumstances twice. And that's what has to be taken into account. There will always be unpredictable and unique social, economic and environmental considerations with every farming practice and most human actions in the world. And those must first be tested and balanced for each unique situation. We should never copy and paste any action, practice or policy. So it's our management which results in good practices becoming damaging because they are being decided in an incomplete or reductionist way with no thought given to big picture and the full and unique short and long-term complexity the practice will be carried out in each time. So in this example, people base their decisions on meeting a need, they needed food, and then they copy and paste what they've been told to do without ever zooming out to look at and balance their own very unique social, economic and environmental variables and then adapting the practice accordingly. So Vianney is a man I work with closely in the same community and he has learned how to manage holistically. And when they were told about the practice, he just used the guiding filtering process of the holistic management framework to test it. So guided by his holistic context, he easily zoomed out to see the full complexity of the practice. And then he just filtered each potential action through a few context checking questions in order to test for any potential short and long term social, economic and environmental consequences and find the best options for himself. So by using the process, he was able to adapt the practice so that it would suit both his family and the surrounding community. So instead of planting in straight lines and cutting down any trees that were in the way, when he tested that decision, he decided to plant around the trees in his field because increasing biodiversity is always made paramount in holistic management. And instead of using the seeds the government had handed out, when he tested that decision, he decided to use indigenous seeds instead because they grow better in the region and would better suit his cultural or social beliefs. And 
instead of burning or using environmentally damaging fertilizer, he decided to clear impact and fertilize his field using his own livestock, which would cause no harm to the environment. It would also save money and it would benefit his family and the community in the long run. And when it came to using thatching grass to mulch the field, when he ran that action through the social check, he discovered it would lead to conflict in the community, both with the livestock owners and the people who wanted to thatch their houses. So he just looked for a better decision and he ended up deciding to use leafy branches to cover and mulch his field. So you can see this is a very easy to follow process, which just guarantees the best possible action becomes apparent in any situation or is looked for given whatever unique complexity the decisions will be carried out in. And it's just based on the universal law that our physical and financial stability depends entirely on environmental health.